I think I know why Russia is the bad guy. Why? Because the U.S. is cutting deals with China. And, and not the U.S., but po these politicians. Oh, yeah. For, for decades now, of our course. manufacturing has been extracted. And we can thank Nixon for this. What did Nixon do? I mean, Nixon went to China and normalized relations. He raised the, the glass to Chairman Mao mm -hmm. in a toast that was written by Pat Buchanan. Jeez, really? Yes, yes. And the thing is, what people don't appreciate, this is what I hate, binary thinkers in politics. You know, they think if I want right-wing ideas, I'm going to vote right-wing. And if I want left-wing ideas, I vote left-wing. Bill Clinton gave a ban on gay marriage and a balanced budget. A right. lot of times, <laughs> because there's no one to a person's left to criticize them, they're in a position to implement uh, right-wing ideas and vice versa. Yeah. Richard Nixon, who cut his teeth uh, running against uh, uh, Helen Douglas, I think was her name, was for the Senate and called her a commie, which she, in some ways she probably was. <laughs> no one's going to say Richard Nixon's too pro-communist. Yeah. So that gave him cover as president to go to China. I mean, Mao is the biggest butcher in history without question yeah. and raise a glass and like, oh, we're friends now. And who's going to say he's not hard enough on communism? So it, it's this is something that a lot of times politics is very counterintuitive, but it, there's a very big incentive for both political parties to make it seem like it's this is left this is right if you want right vote right if you want left vote left and that's not how it ends up look at the spending well, this year there, there's been no voices saying oh, sure. what if it's just maybe 10 percent less no one well trump has really broken the left and the right of whatever it's supposed to be oh yeah it used to you know you know what I, I think that the, the way i view politics right now and one of the reasons why aside from the riots and the chaos i'm like you know what man i'm voting for trump and there's a lot of reasons number one is the cult of intersectionality, identitarianism on the left, is like nightmarishly expansive. It's just getting worse and it's crazy. It's Maoism. It's it. Well, yeah, there I, are struggle sessions. Those are right. literal struggle sessions. My 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 fear is they want to rewind the clock on civil rights. Like I'm not even kidding. They were peeling 209 in uh, Prop 209 in California, right. which is their their public civil rights law. They're sure. like, we're getting rid of this one, and that that's crazy to me. But what one of the big deals, uh, particularly, is is you know Trump trying to remove our troops. Yeah. Uh, he tried doing it in Syria. It's not worked out too well. I remember when he fired those tomahawks at, at, at Syria, the 59 tomahawk missiles, and I was laughing like, yeah, of course, here we go again. It's what presidents do. It's a big game. And then all of a sudden the media was like, hmm, oh, is Trump being presidential the first, now? Yep, of course. We remember yeah. this very well. It's the first time he was being presidential is when he's bombing exactly. the country. It's, it's so... Uh, but yeah. once you know that that's what they believe, it's very disturbing because you see it all the time. So Trump is not a Republican. He's not a Republican the way I remember Republicans growing up. Sure. These these Christian moral Mitt Romney types. So I, I view Trump as I, I he's kind of like to but me. You, but I gotta interrupt you, Tim. That's a myth. The only Christian Mitt Romney type was Jimmy Carter, who was a Democrat. Reagan was Reagan was divorced. Uh, George H. W. Oh, Bush. Oh no, 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 right. I, but I, there I were none. The thing is, that's the image. But none of them were really there. That's not, I don't necessarily mean. I'm, I'm giving a caricature. Okay, I, sure. I don't, obviously, I don't think all the Republicans were like you know hoity-toity Christian up, uptight. I think it was like you know when I was growing up, the Republicans were very moral authoritarian. Oh yeah. And so now that's kind of drifted away, and we're seeing a more like uh, Republicans are becoming a bit more libertarian. Sure. And they're kind of you know less about imposing their morals on other people, whereas the left is doing all of that now. Each party is libertarian when they're in the defensive, and then yeah. when they get in power, they become authoritarian because now yeah. they're in a position to do what they want. Well, I don't, I don't, see, I don't think Trump is whatever that establishment party was. I agree. And I think they're mad. We're seeing all these Republicans resign, retire. You know, not, not resign. Not but like, John Kasich. Please come back, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what? And now they're all endorsing Biden. You yeah. know, what, you know, you know why I see what it is, or the way I see it. They both parties were like. Uh, it, you, you know that Futurama episode? You watch Futurama? Of course. Where the where the uh, Jack Johnson and John Jackson? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think you're. You know, he was like, what don't, did he say? or don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the the, the, the Futurama joke is, um, I think your tax proposal goes too far. I think your tax proposal proposal doesn't go too far enough. Yeah. Like the, you don't even know what they're talking about. So I'm, I post. I remember I posted this meme a long time ago on Facebook. It got a ton of shares. It's an image of uh, a guy on a sitting on a couch with his with his girlfriend and she's got his arm around him and then his arm is behind the couch holding the hands of a of a different woman mm -hmm. and so i put you know uh democrats or republicans you and you're you're on your party like loving them and they're secretly working together yeah of course the the, the, the republican is like the republican establishment and the democratic establishment were in agreement on war and you know yes. this this intervention and all of these things and then trump comes in and it's kind of wild and all over the place now he's sort of no new war, no, no new wars, trying to pull our troops out. It's it's a it's a part of his second term agenda. He actually tried to do it, and now they're going nuts. Here's they've the, been going nuts the whole time for sure. Here's the other thing: if you were wrong by your own admission about the biggest foreign policy decision in the last thirty years, which was the Iraq War, if this is by your own words, this was a mistake. 
mistake means like, oh, Tim, I was supposed to pay you back. I forgot the money. Oops, buddy. You know, or something like that, or I'm late. <laughs> it's not I'm responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. Let's even pretend Iraqi lives don't matter, which a lot of times people actually do. And how many soldiers? If that's the case, if your judgment is that flawed, you're not in a position to try to be commander in chief. You would have actual guilt and be like, what have I done? Like you and I both know people who were had their finger in leading up to the Iraq war and who look back at that and they're still filled with enormous guilt as well they should be. If you thought of this as a mistake, if you had your hand in the Iraq war and you think of it a mistake in the same way you and I and many other people think of a mistake, you're not running for president. You're going to therapy because you're like, how can I sleep at night where because of my vote, so many people lost their kid? I don't think they care. Well, right, right. They don't care. But what I'm yeah. saying is if it really was a mistake, a, a sane person would be like, oh, my God, what have I done? So so, so, what do you think about Trump? I mean, there's, I could go on for hours. What do you, let's, let's be and, more and, specific. And, and, in this context, do you think Trump is trying to do right by America? I, th I think in this context, Trump has been very consistent in being anti-war. I think they, they're, the corporate press and the, the cathedral always like to portray themselves as, as sophisticated, right? Oh, you don't understand. You're, you watch your Big Bang Theory and Peoria, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. We read The New Yorker and we watch, listen to NPR. We're sophisticated. And, you know, the, the arguments for war are often complex, although they're dishonest. And it's like, wait a minute, this idiot is saying, what's the point of going to war? Can someone sit him down and explain it? Because I sure can't. Yeah, you can't because you're a liar, because there isn't a reason. So the fact that he has this very basic aversion to war, the fact that he's like, explain to me why we have to be everywhere on earth. My friend had this idea, and I think this would be brilliant. If the commander in chief, uh, you know, Halloween, October 15th says, you know what? These troops should be spending Christmas with their families. <laughs> I'm pulling them from all over the world, and they can vote, by the way, wow. and let the press freak out. Like, oh, my God, it's going to stabilize the world. And let all these Americans be like, that is how patriots operate. And th this would be an enormous boon for him. And wow. it would drop their mask even further for their malfeasance and depravity. Let them justify why they're in these yeah. places. And why are we in Germany? Yeah. The hell are you talking? It was it was it was Heck, so it was so me. funny when that happened because you know uh, Trump talked about getting our troops out of Afghanistan and Germany, and the intercept. I'm like, you know, this is what's crazy to me. Why why aren't they more in favor of Trump? Take the win when you can take it. Yeah. If 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 you are adamant about getting our troops back, and you're willing to criticize Democrats and Republicans for blocking Trump from doing so, then maybe you shouldn't jump on all of the insane corporate press smears of the president to make money. Do you remember that we, when we assassinated General Soleimani, that was going to be World War III? Yeah, that was a that. given. He was there, you yeah, know, George Washington. I can't believe he killed this guy. What have we done? They're going to nuke Israel. They're not going to back down. But then they back down. No one who said that we would have these disastrous consequences has paid any price for their at least ever this uh, uh, confusion, let alone lies. You know, that's that's why Russia needs to be the specter. If we pull our troops out of Germany, Russia uh, yeah. will move in. Yeah. Russia's not going to invade Germany. Can you imagine if Russia invade Germany? That's ridiculous. I mean, my God. Now, Russia did invade Crimea. Sure. You know, we, we can talk about that, but we didn't do anything then. Right. And that was a long time ago. Right. So ultimately, I ask you the question about Trump in, in kind of the term, terms of I don't know how you how you, would you vote for Trump? I don't believe in voting. No, you don't, you don't I'm an anarchist. No. Oh, okay. Do, well, I guess how do I ask you that question then? Do, what do you, what do you think of his job? Like, do you think he's done a good job? I think what he's best at is dropping, getting them to drop their mask. And yeah. I think what he's best at is something I'm very big and fa heavily in favor of is uh, eliminating political discourse and having the this idea this boomer con fantasy that everyone's going to sit down and it's going to be Reagan and Tip O'Neill and we're going to just shake our hands and come to a compromise. When the parties work together, America gets screwed. It is very, very useful for them to despise each other in real life. A lot of times they despise each other for fake, like in wrestling. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when people found out that Jim, du uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan and the Iron Sheik were in a car together. They got arrested. He's a bad guy. He's a good guy. This is unconscionable. <laughs> this changes everything. You mean Kamala isn't really a cannibal from Africa who eats chickens? 
um, it blew everyone's mind. And a lot of that is fake. And for yeah. the cameras, Lindsey Graham is a great example. He was losing his mind about Kavanaugh. Yeah. Where Where have been this Julie Swetnick summons? Where have been the accountability yeah, course, people who lied, called him a gang rapist? There been That's why I don't like any of these people. Right. Exactly. So they <laughs> put on a good show and whatever. But he is, uh, I think, showing a lot of people that there's large segments of the left who want you dead, but will settle for your submission. And it's become and the fact that you would have. Let's go back to the Atlantic. If I were, as an entity, responsible for getting us into the Great War and felt some remorse about this century-old mistake, nowadays I'd be like, you know what, this is our background. I'm going to err on the side of caution and err on the side of non-interventionism because I got a lot of explaining to do and a lot of making up for it, but they don't because they are proud of their depravity. Well, they're, well I think they're proud of World War II. Oh, sure, but that, that wasn't the Atlantic. World War I was largely... No, I mean... I mean you, you, you get an example. But they couldn't get us into World War II. It took the Japanese. Right. But I think after World War II, they can justify, you see, here's what happens. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's a legitimate question about how do we deal with China? I, I mean, look, like they, I have no good answers. I don't think either. there are any good answers on yeah. the table. They're not a paper tiger. They're an enormously powerful. They're inc incredibly vindictive. They do not value human life. And that's and when you have a billion people, you don't value human life. That's things get very, very tricky very quickly. I hear a lot of people say that China is a paper tiger. And I'm like, that's, as far as I'm concerned, irrelevant because they have economic power. Yeah. They can buy the, 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 the you know, they've got know a huge rock lobster or whatever. They've got a huge military. And I, that's, and th the thing is, they, they're also in a position to do, they've got nukes. I mean, right. a paper tiger or not, this, the, and these people are, are a very, it's very important for them not to lose face in, in the public eye. So th these are very you know, dangerous stakes. One of, uh, we, this is a good opportunity to segue into like the, the riots and stuff. Because okay. one, of, one of the things I've pointed out, we were, mentioned, we were talking about a little bit about, about this before the show. There's a lot of things that have happened because of COVID and the riots that have benefited us if it comes to war. Notably that our cities are decentralized. Yes. Our economy is becoming remote workers, making it very hard to destabilize. And people are armed to the teeth. We've gotten rid of non-essential jobs. And a lot of the jobs that are coming back first are the ones that are, for the most part, more essential yeah. than others. And some jobs have permanently closed that weren't as essential, which means a lot of people are now going to be seeking out work that will be more in line with essential activities. These things together, that's going to help us out a lot if it comes to war. And there's been uh, there's something I often refer to called Thucydides Trap. This has just been referenced in the media over and over again. Are you, you, have you familiar with the? With Is that the, the one with the boat? Thucydides trap. No, it's the it's it's I don't know the exact reference of why it is, you know, named this. But the general idea is when a rising economic power approaches the dominant power, war breaks out. OK. And it's like I think the Atlantic did a story saying out of the past 500 years, there have been 16 moments and 12 of them resulted in war. So one of the arguments I hear from the people who are pro like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the, these you're familiar with these, of course, yeah. yeah, the yeah. trade deals was that it would prevent war from breaking out by creating strong economic ties between the two countries. Send all our factories over to China. We can't go to war with them. They'll rise and become the dominant superpower. But who cares? We're all rich. Oh, that's that's a very disturbing. I mean, who that's cares? One that's one of the arguments. Who I've cares heard? if the yeah. Chinese? Oh, my God, that's horrifying. So the, the idea was what is the I mean, I'm going to get all Christian, but what value is the price of money if it cost of your soul? I mean, this, this that's is, what this, scares me. That's a depraved nation. Well, so state I, the government. I mean. Right, right. But the, the people the, there are people who genuinely argue war is bad. We don't want death. And if we have these trade lines between the U.S. and China, it will disincentivize war because people would lose money because but of it. But we still get death because when you have a totalitarian regime, the oppression right. I and know. the amount of people and that's, are killed. It's my God. And, and if they take over. Yes, of so, course. So Bernie and Trump oppose TPP. Okay. Now, Bernie, right. he, yeah, he yeah. Sold, sold out to the DNC as soon as he could. Of course. You know, he doesn't say millionaires anymore. Is that right? Right. It's just billionaires. Now, you say millionaires and billionaires. Yeah, now yeah. it's just billionaires because yeah. he's a millionaire. Yeah. I'm assuming that's the reason. But he's, he's, he's totally in line, endorsed them all, every step of the way. But Trump is very much, he shut it down. He, he shut down NAFTA. And it, it seems like whether Trump has the ability to do so or not, whether he's uh, sporadic or not, he does want to help this country. There's also an example in American shores, which is Alexander Hamilton's brilliant idea was to have a national bank and nationalize the debt because he said this would be a great blessing because when you have the debt of 13 states interwound, you can't unwind it. So it's yep. going to be a country, whereas if you had 13 states, 13 cur currencies, it's very easy to separate apart right. to the point where Jefferson, who was like a huge enemy of this, he's like, this is unconstitutional. He backed up having the National Bank as president. And what that led to 70 years later was a civil war. This idea that economic entanglements 
are going to be a guarantee against war, maybe against war, but it's sure not going to be a guarantee against conflict. And we saw it, thankfully, the, the other peaceful way with Brexit, where they voted for Brexit, but then implementing it took two years because no one could negotiate the terms of divorce successfully. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it was... I think it was more than that. It was a more, yeah, it's extended period of time. Yeah, it felt like a betrayal from the the politicians from oh, Parliament. Oh, Theresa May is just like yeah. it's, I'm really happy that she's going to go down in history as one of the worst politicians so in history. You know what happened? What is it? December thirteenth, twenty nineteen, in the UK. No, the, wait, would you, insane landslide victory. For oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yes. You think that's coming here? No, like, you don't think so. No, I don't think so. Like, like the House flipping Republican, Senate going, you know, maintain. No, I don't. I mean, it's very different with a parliament because basically the parliament is the equivalent of our House of Representatives, right. right? And you had Jeremy Corbyn, which people don't appreciate to what extent Jeremy Corbyn is a despicable people, yeah. evil person who, who validated enormous anti-Semitism and radicalism. He was like a Stalinist, right? Yeah. Joe Biden, it's very hard to hate him. Uh, in terms of politics, he's not a bad person. He might be an, an, an idiot or an ass or many things. It's very hard to make the case this guy is a radical. Uh, my favorite Joe Biden is angry old man Joe Biden. There was a... a um, uh, um, Look fat Joe Biden? An, a, no, an, an activist. An activist got in his face and said, you need open borders. Biden turned his back and said, go vote for Trump. Go vote for Trump. Yeah. <laughs> like stuff like that. I mean, he's much more old school. I mean, the guy's been in the Senate since, 19, since Nixon. So he put... A lot of black people in jail. Uh, he the got, crime bill. yeah, he got Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court to some extent. I mean, he didn't fight it or, or whatever his role was in that. So he has a rec. I mean, he's talking the nonsensical talk now. Just yesterday, he was claiming that a black person invented the light bulb. This is just pure out is of. Is that this, what he said? Yes. Oh, this geez, is pure man. out of this kind of revisionist history, right, blah right, blah, right. where a, a, you know population is the w most oppressed in history, but also the greatest inventor simultaneously somehow. <laughs> uh, but but this has been common parlance with this kind of Howard Zinn uh, far lefty and Joe Biden just, you know, being a good politician and talking the talk. But it's going to be very hard to compare him to Jeremy Corbyn because Jeremy Corbyn, I don't think we have any American analog in terms of how what a nasty person he is and how uncharismatic and how radical his ideas were. I have a Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.